Hi, this video is on the distributive property with greatest common factor. What you're going to need to do is have your composition notebook out and a sharpened pencil ready to go before you get started any further. You need to turn to the page where you have the handout that you see here on this screen where it says pulling out a GCF and then where it says distributing a GCF. The standard that we will be covering is 6.NS.2.4. It's the same one that we have been working with, but it's what's highlighted in green or underlined in green this time. We're going to use the distributive property to express a sum of two whole numbers, 1 through 100, with a common factor as a multiple of a sum of two whole numbers with no common factor. So I know that was kind of a mouthful and it was very wordy, but I promise by the end of this video it will make sense. So if you open up your um, flip book that you glued into your composition notebook today in class, the first example on the left side will say example 48 plus 56. So I want you to focus on that part there. Now it's going to have three blank, blank lines that come after it, but I want to look at the part that's just beneath that where it says GCF and it lists 48 and it lists the 56. So we're going to start by finding the GCF of 48 and 56. Now GCF stands for greatest common factor. So when we're dealing with factors, we want to think about the numbers that we would multiply together to get 48 and to get 56. You can use whichever method you want to use that you have been shown previously. I'm just going to use the list method for our purposes here today. So the factors of 48 would be 1 times 48, 2 times 24, 3 times 16, 4 times 12, let me make that better, and 6 times 8. Those are all the factors of 48. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 16, 24, and 48. So now we're going to do the same thing with 56. I know that 1 times 56 gives me 56. 2 times 28 gives me 56, 4 times 14, and 7 times 8. So those are my factors of 56. 1, 2, 4, 7, 8, 14, 28, and 56. So now I'm going to look at my two numbers, my two sets of factors, and I'm going to find the largest one that they have in common. That one happens to be 8. So I'm going to go ahead and circle it on my papers. So on your paper, this is what it should look like after you have listed the factors of 48 and 56. So the two that we said that were in common were the 8. That is our greatest common factor. Now let me do that in a different color so you can see it better. So what we're going to do with that 8 is we're going to go ahead and write it on our um, line just outside of the parentheses. So we're putting the 8 right over here. So now afterwards, what we're going to do is um, we're going to figure out 8 times what gives me the 48 since that was our first number. So when you think of that, 8 times 6 is going to give us 48. And now we do the same thing with the 56. 8 times what gives us 56? And that happens to be 5. I'm sorry, 7, not 5, 7. I had a brain fart moment there for a minute. So what we're doing here is by listing the factors of 48 and 56, we are able to find the GCF. That happened to be 8. So over here at the very top, I want you to write GCF because on the outside of the parentheses, you're, that's what you're going to be doing is finding the GCF and writing it down. Now the inside of the parentheses are going to be what you're multiplying the 8 by or the GCF by to get the 48 or the 56. So inside the parentheses we're going to go ahead and put quotient number 1 and quotient number 2. And the reason why I'm, I'm saying quotient here, because quotient is really the answer to a division problem, because what we basically did is we did 48 
divided by 8, which is how we got the 6. And then we did 56 divided by 8, which is how we got the 7. So let's try that again with an easier set of numbers. Look at the 3 and the 6 at the bottom of this page. So to list the factors of 3 and 6, I know the factors of 3 are just simply 1 and 3. For 6, they are 1, 2, 3, and 6. The largest number that they have in common is the 3. So I'm going to circle the 3. And that's what I'm going to write on the outside of my parentheses, right over here like this. So now I'm going to ask myself for this first blank right here. 3, which is a th this 3 right here that I'm talking about, divided by 3 is 1. Now I'm going to talk about um, 6. 6, this is where I'm getting the 6 that I'm circling, divided by 3 is 2. So I'm going to write the 2 over here. And that's basically how you would take... Um, a sum or a set of numbers and break it down to put it into a distributive property type of problem. All right, so the next thing I want you to do is go directly across in your page and we're going to go ahead and fill in the blanks for the steps for this top part. So where it says steps, find the, we're going to put in our first blank, GCF, of the two numbers in the example. Step two, we're going to divide each of the numbers in the parentheses by the GCF. Step three, we're going to rewrite the equation. And step four, we're going to put the GCF on the outside of the parentheses. put the quotient, which is the answer to the division problem, of each other number inside the parentheses. Okay. Now, if this doesn't make sense to you, we will cover it when you come into class tomorrow. So just be sure to jot down any questions that you might have so far so when you come in, we're ready to get going. Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at the bottom of the left side of your paper where it says format. I want you to go ahead and pause the video if you need to, but go ahead and fill in those two blanks like I did here in the bright pink color, product one plus product two. So now what we're going to do is we have this problem already written in the distributive property uh, way. So what we want to do is undo that distributive property type way. So what we're going to do here is we're going to undo what we just got done doing. So we're going to take the 7, which is our number on the outside of the parentheses, and we're going to multiply it by the 8. That's where we're getting product number 1. 7 times 8 gives us 56. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take that 7 and we're going to multiply it to the second number that's inside those parentheses. And we're going to do 7 times 6. That product is 42. So to find the answer to this problem right over here, you would do 7 times 8. You write down the 56. You would then do the 7 times 6, write down the 42. And then we're going to go ahead and add those two numbers together. When we do that, we get 98 as a final answer. So you can see that what we did is the example that we did up above, this is a similar question, but we just kind of did it in a different type of way. Okay, so now we're going to finish filling in the steps for that second part there. So if you want to pause your video and... Um, Fill in all these blanks here before I start to read them. Do that so it can make more sense as I go over them. So step number one says, remember that whenever things are stuck together, we have to multiply. 
Here we have a number stuck next to a parentheses, so we will multiply across. So this is the part you guys we were talking about how when you have a, a number outside of the parentheses without a math symbol in between them, okay? That means you have to multiply. So we're going to call this the rainbow. Some people call this a Spider-Man because you're kind of making a web across things. Step three, we're going to multiply the GCF, which is the outside number, on the outside and the first number. And then, of course, we write it down. Then we're going to repeat with the second number. So that means we're going to take the GCF and multiply by the second number on the inside of the parentheses. In step five, we write the new equation. Okay, so I know that was kind of a quick lesson there. We will be reviewing this lesson in class when you come in tomorrow. So be sure to have any questions ready to go because we're going to review it and then we're going to do an activity together in class. All right, you guys, that's it for now. Thank you.